The question for you guys. Rob, five years from now, knowing what you know today, if you had to guess what percentage of bikes in the Santa Cruz catalog are going to have a motor in them? I think a safe answer might be 50%. Hello everybody, it's Jared from Virtual Bike and Board, and this is a brand new Santa Cruz Heckler SL. Now, my question is this, is Santa Cruz creating a bicycle where you can basically not tell them it's an electric bike because they're, they're still afraid to create electric bikes? Or are they continuing to push the boundaries forward and creating products that at the end of the day, they want to ride? So stay tuned in this video because we're going to talk about the tech specs of the bicycle and then we're going to get into the heckler name. They thought they were going to get heckled because they were making an e-mountain bike when they said they were never going to make e-mountain bike. Why they named this bike the heckler SL and how Santa Cruz maybe came up with the SL terminology before Specialized did. And stick around to the very, very end. We'll dream crush this bike, get a weight measurement on it. All that's coming. A couple other things we're going to talk about this video is a little bit of the controversy side of things when we come to e-bikes, and especially with Santa Cruz's opinions on, on electric bikes from five, 10 years ago, and now where they stand in the market now. There's a lot of changing of the guard there and, and why things are sometimes tricky from a manufacturer's perspective, especially as you get bigger, right? You know, people are going to hate me for this, but I feel like Santa Cruz is kind of like the what your buddy can say who's making bikes in his garage is very different than a massive company with a lot of stakeholders can say and how they have to voice their opinion. So all that to come. Santa Cruz Heckler SL. Specs first, basic overview. This is the Santa Cruz Heckler SL XO Access Reserve build, $11,700, which is a fairly steep price point. But again, it is a fairly fancy bicycle. A couple basic things about the bike. 160 mil travel in the front, 150 mil travel on the back. Mixed wheels, so 29 wheel in the front, 27 five wheel on the back. It's basically a Bronson with a motor in it, essentially. Mixed wheel, in my opinion, works really well for an e-bike, so that I'm pretty excited about. And then again, this spec model, you've got Ceram XO Axis Transmission, which I think the craziest part about transmission on this bicycle is it's actually the loudest part of the bicycle. The motor seems to be quieter, which is crazy. The transmission shifts really well under power is what we're noticing, but now, what just got released is the new SRAM motor. It's gonna be very interesting to see how all the other manufacturers try to catch up with the SRAM motor and axis transmission powertrain. I don't exactly know how to call it, but this model has got a Fazua motor. So Fazua Ride 60 motor, uh, 430 watt hour battery. Fazua is kind of cool. Like I'm excited about Fazua. They're a new company. They're 10 years old actually, but that feels new. A couple of young guys started it in Europe somewhere. Their whole goal was to make the best integrated battery and motor setup on a bicycle. And I would say, in my opinion, they've done a pretty darn good job here of it. I mean, the motor and battery are basically indetectable. Now, what seems to be happening is a lot of these manufacturers are making the down tube on a lot of their analog bikes a bit fatter. I don't know if they're doing that to provide some rigidity to the frame in a different way. Part of me thinks they're maybe building the down tubes on a lot of their analog bikes fatter to almost make the e-bikes feel a little bit stealthier. That's just my opinion. But anyways, batteries tucked in here. The, the biggest thing that I have a gripe about is like in the bike industry, why are we not using batteries as part of the rigidity to the frame at this point? The car industry is doing that already. Tesla's battery pack is a huge part of the rigidity and the safety of that car. Manufacturers start using the battery as rigidity in the frame so we can peel back some of this carbon and have these bikes be a little bit lighter. So that is basic specs overview of the bicycle. Heckler SL. A lot of interesting stuff here when it comes to the name. So the Heckler was a bike that was produced by Santa Cruz back in the 90s. It was one of the OG trail bikes from back in the day, full suspension, basically like a kind of one of the first all mountain bikes. Now, they also made what was called the Heckler SL. It was kind of a beta bike, which then turned into the production bike, which was the Santa Cruz Superlight. So that was kind of like their really slimmed down version of their trail bike. It was spec with a lot lighter parts. Many generations of that bike were made. It was around for a long time. Uh, and a bike that a lot of people love. Now, why is that interesting is one, manufacturers recycle names a lot, but the SL part is very interesting because when Specialized first launched the Levo SL, we all thought that they were the first ones to coin the SL term and we kind of just were calling it super light, right? They didn't really advertise super light and I think now I know why, because Santa Cruz was actually the first one to do it with the Heckler SL in the 90s. That's the super light or the SL part of things. Now the Heckler, Santa Cruz took a pretty aggressive stance on e-bikes five to 10 years ago. Let's call it seven years ago now. When e-mountain bikes were really first starting to come to market and there was a lot of controversy there, Santa Cruz went in the camp of, we're never gonna build an electric mountain bike. Now, why did they do that? It's interesting. Back then, Santa Cruz was really aligned with like the core mountain biker market and the core mountain biker market didn't think they wanted an e-bike. Now, hats off to manufacturers who said, you know what, screw it, we're just going to make it happen anyways, and, and really started pushing the boundaries and pushing e-bikes out to market. But Santa Cruz was pretty adamantly against it. So, hence the term heckler, 
When they decided that they were going to come out with an electric mountain bike, they recycled the name from back in the day, the Heckler, and they used that name because they thought they were they were kind of, I think, trying to make fun of themselves a little bit because they knew they were going to take a lot of flack for bringing an electric mountain bike to market. Now, bringing that full circle, at least in my opinion, is that Santa Cruz's first iteration of the Heckler, not this bike, but the first generation Santa Cruz Heckler, I feel like they brought that bike to market maybe a little bit too fast and they did it because they had pressure to do it, not because they wanted to do it. Now, again, Heckler, they thought they were gonna get heckled because they were making an e-mountain bike when they said they were never gonna make e-mountain bike. But I think a lot of the heckling actually happened because they made an e-mountain bike that really wasn't up to snuff of a lot of the other bikes in the Santa Cruz lineup. So Heckler, you know, a little bit ironic there, but that's the story. Where things start to get really interesting to me about this particular bicycle is like, it, it's kind of a sign of we're starting to see Santa Cruz mature as a brand a little bit. Now, what do I mean by that? Again, I think it was like seven or eight years ago when Rob Roskop famously said that Santa Cruz would never make an electric mountain bike, although I could never actually find that sound bite, so don't quote me on that completely. Um, they've come full circle and, and launched a bike that, that really is like ready for market. The battery and the motor is really well integrated to the bicycle. The, the cables, the cockpit, like everything is pretty refined, right? It's clearly not a first generation bike anymore, or at least not their first generation of electric mountain bikes. More along the lines of like maturing as a brand. So like, I feel like Roscop played a really strong role in like keeping the core part of Santa Cruz happening or like the cool guy, Santa Cruz like the cool guy brand. But I think he was also one of those people who was like pushing the brand forward away in a little bit. Basically what I'm trying to get at is like, Santa Cruz is maturing as a brand and they know that they have to make electric mountain bikes if they're gonna be here to stay. Now, they famously said they would make no electric mountain bikes. Then Roscop said 50% of the Santa Cruz lineup three years from now, I think that was like a year ago, three years from now will be electric mountain bikes. Currently four out of 16 Santa Cruz mountain bikes or Santa Cruz bicycles are electric. So we're at 25%. Now, again, as we see brands mature, right? They get bigger, they have to, they have to put out like a more finished product to market that's had more testing on it. So they have to be a little bit slower to release products. But this is a great example of what we get from that, right? We get a much more refined product. Now, with all that said, um, you know, people are gonna hate me for this, but I feel like Santa Cruz is kind of like the Burton of the mountain, like the Burton of like the bike industry right now. And like, yeah, Burton is a big company, but they still make a lot of really great products. There's a story that John Mackey tells, I think it's John Mackey. Oh no, it was Stonyfield Yogurt guy, forget his name, but his, his earthy, crunchy, crunchy hippie friends were giving him a lot of for selling Stonyfield Yogurt to Walmart. Okay, totally valid, right? I, I get where those people might've been coming from. But how he rebuttals that statement is he said, you know, do you know how much pesticides we're keeping out of the earth by selling this yogurt to Walmart? Because Walmart buys so much of this yogurt and then sells it to consumers that the, the amount of pesticides that are being kept out of the soil is massive. So where am I going at with this? It's like, yeah, your buddy's company that's making electric mountain bikes in his garage and like they're really cool and really pushing the, the boundaries and they're only selling to a small amount of consumers and it's really core and cool, bro. Like that's awesome. A company like Santa Cruz has gotten so big where like last year, I think they donated a million dollars to trail advocacy through their pay dirt program. So it's like, yeah, they're bigger. Yeah, they're maturing as a brand a little bit, but they're also able to take some of that money and do really cool things to still push this, uh, push the evolution of the sport. So in conclusion, right? It's like, I don't have to tell you that this bike rips. It, it feels really good going uphill. Personally, I always feel like I want full power when I'm going uphill on an electric bike. But then as soon as you point the thing downhill, it's like, oh, thank God, this thing is light. It feels exactly like a regular bike. Uh, another thing Santa Cruz did incredibly well on this bike, I've talked about it through the entire video, but the integration, it's spot on. Now, what is interesting to me, and I don't know the answer here, but Bazua is owned by Pond. They got purchased by Pond a couple years ago. Santa Cruz is owned by Pond. I don't know exactly how much communication is going back and forth, but it'll be interesting to see how Fazua continues to integrate their product into the Santa Cruz lineup because I think it's a really good partnership and they're making really good stuff. So with that said, it's a great bike. I think you'll enjoy it. Santa Cruz has built a product that basically integrates a battery and a motor into an electric bicycle and it's basically undetectable. Like I always say, round up for distance, round up for time. Thanks for watching. Dream pressure. Let's see what happens. No pedals, no bottle cages. This is XL Axis Reserve build. One of the highest specs you can get and here goes up. 41 pounds, 12 ounces.